Beautiful people out there, this is Sikan Pero, and I'm once again welcoming you to Sikan Pero on YouTube. Thank you and God bless you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for liking the video after watching. Thank you for leaving your comments and suggestions. I always receive them with the humbleness of heart. They help me to always be on my feet. They keep me on my toes. They correct me when I'm wrong. And they also come forth with recommendations that enables me to improve this channel in the way that and gets you stuck on this platform without, without not going to any other place. Before I will even go to today's message, allow me to issue this disclaimer. The subject matter for today, I am not assuming to be expert. I am not assuming to be a technocrat. I am not assuming to know it all. I am not assuming to be a repository of knowledge with respect to this subject matter. I am not assuming to have authority with respect to this subject matter. Most of the introduction or most of the education that I'm going to provide here would be of opinion, would be of experience, would be of certain things that I can relate to, especially with life in abroad or life in diaspora, especially a place like America that I'm finding myself. And I must also say, under no circumstances can I seek and pair off be of help to you to secure a visa from Ghana, from Togo, from Burkina Faso, from Cote d'Ivoire, from South Africa, or from any other African country to come to a place like America. I am not in a position to be able to help you through that. Under no circumstances would I be able to connect you or link you to somebody who might have the experience, the know-how, to help you to secure a visa through the legitimate means to be able to travel outside Ghana or outside Africa. That is not part of my work. That is not part of my job. My work here is very simple. Share my little experience. Share my little life that I lived in Ghana, that I'm living now in America with you, who is aspiring to be in America. So that since I came to this country, most of my mistakes that I've made could be of a lesson to you so that in case you are also fortunate to get your visa and you will be on your way to this country, you will be here and you will be of much wisdom and knowledge to live a better life more than the life that I'm living today and to also be able to direct people that will also be coming uh, behind you. You see, uh, because of the situations as it pertains in my own country, Ghana, as it is pertaining in Cote d'Ivoire, as it is pertaining in, let's say, a place like uh, Burkina Faso or most neighboring countries to Ghana or most African countries, the economic hardship, the rising numbers in, on, the rising numbers in unemployment, I mean, the, the, the rate at which the African youth is becoming jobless every single hour is compelling most energetic and exuberant youth to turn their back on the continent of Africa, to turn their back on Ghana, and to try to immigrate to a place like America, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and the Western world to seek for greener pastures. Sometimes, I mean, you know, you, you would wonder, I mean, why must we the Africans turn our back on our own continent, turn our back on our own country and decide to embark on a journey to a foreign land that we, that we knew nothing about? Why must me especially, I mean, coming from a country like Ghana with a population of almost about 32 million people, having been blessed with all the natural resources, all the goodies on the earth, we have gold, we have diamond, we have bauxite, we have iron ore, we have aluminium, we have manganese, we, we, we recently discovered oil. Why must me, 
coming from this small country and yet blessed with all these natural resources. Why was I defining myself in America? No wonder my first international travel that I did, I traveled from Ghana to Singapore. That was my first international travel. And on our way to Singapore, there was a Singaporean who was like sitting beside me. And he inquired to know, young man, what are you going to do in Singapore? And I told him, my visa clearly says I'm going there as a tourist for one month. But I wouldn't also hesitate to explore and prominent opportunities should in case I'm favored. And he asked me why. Because Singapore is an island with a population of almost about 2 million people. Singapore has no natural resources. Even most of the land that they are physically inhabiting, they reclaim the, they reclaim the land from the sea. So why must I turn my back on my own country? Ghana that has all these goodies, that has all these natural resources, in, 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 into thinking of immigrating to a place like Singapore that I know nobody, that I'm taking this calculator risk into thinking that life there could be of up to me as compared to my own motherland. And I told him, I mean, it is so sad and sickening. Anytime this question is being posed to us as Africans, it's being posed to us as Ghanaians. Why must we even travel at all? Looking at how blessed our country is. I nearly cried, you know. Because personally, that question has always been that, that question has always been rhetorical to me. Why must even Ghanaians travel? Looking at how blessed we are as a country. But I told my brother, my brother, you see, I am not just traveling for fantasy. I'm not just traveling because I have abundance and I have nothing else to do in my home country. But I'm traveling because after my college education, countless of application letters have been written by me. It has been submitted to most companies. They will sometimes call, call you for interview. You will go. They will select you. And so they will ask you to come in payment before they can officially enroll you in their company. If you don't have the money to pay, the one with the money to pay takes the job. So this thing frustrates us as a people. And you can also go to other company that are ready to employ you. But yet the conditions and terms of services is not realistic in a way that it would even compare you to stay back in your home country to even work. We see jobless people every single day. We see many people dying as a result of poor roads. We see the, the water, we see the water that our people are drinking. We see poverty scaring at us every single day. We see the rate at which our hospitals, our hospitals are in a poor and bad taste. We see the rate at which our people are walloping in poverty. We see the rate at which our own parents are struggling to, 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 to make ends meet. And we don't want our generation to become like that. That's the reason why we want to leave our own country in seeking for greener pastures so that when things become so well for us, we can send money back home to support our family or we can finally decide to relocate back. So I am not just a happy man. I'm not just a happy young man to be turning my back on my own country and to be thinking of having a better life in Singapore, a country that I know nothing about. But it is a calculated risk that I'm ready to take. And I believe I'm speaking for you. I believe as I'm talking, you are also in my shoes. I believe I'm speaking your mind. I believe that is your current predicament. I believe that is currently what you are going through and the, frustra and the frustration is unbearable. That's the reason why you're not ready to listen to anybody. You want to live at all costs. You want to live at all risk. I do understand you. I share your sentiments. Because where you are, I've been there before. So I'm, I'm, I'm a better person to know the state of your mind and to be able to caution and to advise you respectfully so that if only you could pay heed to me you wouldn't repeat and make the same mistake that i did that nearly killed me in the journey to a foreign land that i knew nothing about so to my brother to my sister watching me run i know you are frustrated i mean after your nursing career you are still staying home jobless unemployed i know you are you, you are a university graduate 
Very sharp, very smart. You came with a first class. You came with a second class artist. You are still stuck at home without anything to do. And now you also try to also start some small business. The system is frustrating you. The system is not friendly. The system doesn't create that enabling environment to enable you to thrive. So your only reason for survival is to leave the country. I know and I share your sentiments. That's the reason why I'm here. But I'm here to caution you. I'm here to talk to you as a brother. I'm here to talk to you as a sister. I'm here for us to have a dialogue. I'm speaking my mind. I'm sharing my opinion. I'm sharing my experience. So that you can also get back to me in your write-up, in your comments, in your suggestions. So that together, we can know that if, 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 if even the only option out there for us is to travel, to be able to live a better life, to support our family and to support our country, we can do it in a legal way, we can do it in a lawful way, we can do it in a right way, so that we don't make a mistake that most of our brothers has made whilst trying to risk their life to go on the sea from Libya to Sicily and to think of getting to Italy and to enter Europe. They got into the boat, they got, got into the middle of the sea, there wasn't any rescue vessel that was coming for them. So they, they both capsized and they all died. Your life is precious. You want to fight for the survival of this life. And you can't afford to lose this life. So I'm here to caution you, to dialogue with you, so that together we can all see the way forward. This is just an intro, as I said. I'll be coming with the part one of our journey to seek whatever it is that we are looking for. So that we can do this journey with the right frame of mind, with the right preparation, with the right resources, with the right connection, with the right people, and to get to the right, de right destination. So that you don't make the mistake I made almost about 10 years ago when I decided to embark on a first international travel. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for staying glued to Sikam Perov platform on YouTube. Thank you for following me on TikTok too with the same name, Sikam Perov. Thank you for being my friend on Facebook with Sikam Perov. I cherish you, I love you, and God bless you. If you watch this video, like it. If you like the content, share the video to enable most of your friends, your colleagues that are desperate as you are, have the opportunity to also see what I'm about to share. So that together we can all embark on a legal international travel to benefit us, to benefit our family, and to also overall benefit our motherland Ghana. Thank you and God bless you. I will see you in the journey of life.